Well, I want to welcome you all tonight to the ASI Hour. My name is Andy Hunsaker, and I am the General Vice President for ASI National. And I just want to welcome you all tonight. It's going to be a very special night. You're going to love our guest tonight. And I also pray that you all had a very safe and um, happy Thanksgiving. Um, we're living in terrible times, we know. But God is good, and I pray that each one of you had a great Thanksgiving. There's much to be thankful for, and that you were um, safe and got to spend some time with family. Tonight, um, we're going to be, as I mentioned, having a very special guest. But before we get into tonight, I want to just remind you that this is a weekly program. And Harold Lance will be our speaker next week. We all love Harold. He's wonderful. He's just a mentor to me personally. And next week, he'll be sharing his testimony of how the Lord led him in his law practice. And as you know, went into to full-time ministry and is really one of the pillars in ASI. So I pray that you'll all tune in to hear him next week for that session. Our guest tonight is a physician, Dr. Camille Clark. I met Dr. Clark when she was here in Boston doing her residency in internal medicine. And I was very impressed with her as a person, her commitment to Jesus Christ. And I know you'll be thrilled as you hear her journey of medicine and really turning a corner to make medicine a ministry. And we all know the motto of ASI is sharing Christ in our marketplace. And Camille is doing that. She's enlarged her borders and is really doing what Christ has asked us to do. And that's give of ourselves and to be selfless. And so with that, um, I'm going to, to pray. And then we'll get started with our um, interview tonight. Let's pray. Kind Father in heaven, Lord, I just thank you that you've kept us healthy through this pandemic so far. I recognize that some have not been healthy and we may have even lost some people. But Lord, you're good, you're with us tonight. And I just thank you for the emphasis tonight on health. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Bible says that, that your prayer is that we'll prosper and be in health. I don't think that prosper means financially necessarily, but that we can be in health so that we can serve you. And that's what Camille is doing. And we're looking forward to hearing her testimony. May we sit up and pay attention and have the Holy Spirit speak to us, asking us what we can do. Do we need to change direction, change course? Mm -hmm. I pray that you'll speak to us tonight as you speak through Camille. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen, amen. Camille, it's my privilege to talk to you tonight. It's just amazing to be able to talk to you. I met you when you were a, a young, and you're still young, <laughs> vibrant, um, fresh out of medical school, mm -hmm. uh, resident, um, mm -hmm. met you at some ASI meetings here at the, at the Atlantic Union chapter. We had brunch together. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. I still remember it was just wonderful. And so I'm just thrilled that you're here with us. And I know you have a lot to share, and I'm going to talk very little. But I want you to tell us a little bit about your journey, your journey in medicine, and how it brought you to where you are right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you so much for this invitation to join and to share my testimony, Andy. It's wonderful to see you, uh, wonderful to see you today, okay. wonderful to share with the ASI family. As Andy mentioned, I have followed ASI for several years, and it's been just a really beautiful part of my testimony and my journey growing in the Lord. So I guess my journey in health evangelism started since I was in my mother's womb. <laughs> you know, it's funny because she tells me the story, and sometimes I get a little bit choked up. But she said when she was pregnant with me, as she was walking to work, you know, walking under the bridge where my dad would, you know, drop her off and then she'd walk to her office, she would rub her stomach and pray to the Lord that I would grow up to love him and to serve him. Mm -hmm. And I praise the Lord for the prayers of my mother. And Besides that, my mom would also share with me the story of the doctor who delivered me and was my pediatrician, Dr. Buxton. 
So a little bit of a backdrop story of my mom. So, you know, she wasn't, I guess, a vegetarian or too much into health when she was younger, but she had a few girlfriends who became vegetarian. And she would tell me that she would tell them, you don't know how good that chicken tastes, or you don't know how good that beef tastes. <laughs> but deep within her heart, she really wanted to change, and she really wanted to, you know, um, improve um, some of her health habits. And uh, fortunately, eventually, she did. And prior to having me, she decided, you know, a lot of information was coming out in the '80s about, you know, the dangers of, you know, meat and the diet and all of that. And she said, well. You know, if this is not good, I'm not giving it to my babies. <laughs> and so shortly before having me, she became a vegetarian. Um, but when she was pregnant, she became anemic. And so, you know, the traditional doctors were telling her, well, it's because you're it's because you're vegetarian and you need to eat some beef liver, you know, so that your <laughs> so that your iron would improve. And uh, she went to a lovely Adventist doctor who worked at Branson Hospital in Toronto, Canada, where I was born. And she told her, no, sweetheart, you don't have to eat beef. And she would give her recipes on different foods that she could eat and carry her out back to her garden and write down on a little cue card about eating dark green leafy vegetables and how to have a healthy life. And little did Bucks, Dr. Bucks did, or even my mom know, that several years later, I would try to be that doctor, right, who is sharing with my patients these alternate ways of improving their health, you know, from some of the natural means that God has in nature. So I think that's where my health journey started, and I'm so grateful. So fast forward a little bit, um, I had a rich experience in education, and um, even in high school, I kind of liked everything. So that made the decision of what to go, <laughs> what to go into in college a little bit difficult because I enjoyed education, loved the sciences, loved the music, loved business, and um, I went into biology. And I wasn't completely sure why it was that I went into biology, but you know, even when things got tough as it normally does with you know a lot of uh, the freshman class. Class, biology class dwindling. I, I was not a quitter, so I said, you know what, let me stick through it. And then that December of my freshman year, I went on my first mission trip. Mm -hmm. And that mission trip was to Nairobi, Kenya. And that really changed my heart. Just seeing the children, the people, interacting with them, having that life-changing experience. And what I came to realize there is that the gift of health, um, gift of healing was just so beautiful and so powerful and something that could really be transformational, um, especially in the lives of those who need it at the most. So after that wonderful trip, I went back to Andrews where I was studying at the time. And I remember very clearly, I was in Whitehall for one of my classes and there was a big desk with a bunch of red books <laughs> that they were giving away for free. And um, a lot of these books were, you know, part of the spirit of prophecy, didn't really know too much about it at the time. But one of the books that I picked up was entitled Medical Ministry. Amen. And I tell you, Andy, after reading just a few pages, I said, this is it, Lord. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> I know what I want to do, and I know um, how I want to serve the Lord. And I really praise God for um, that clear message, um, that clear purpose, you know, from my teenage years. And um, as you know, the journey is not easy. So I definitely needed something more than money to keep me going. <laughs> um, that purpose and that vision really, really um, paved the way for me. And so I was very grateful. So shortly after that, you know, I got involved in a lot of other different rich experiences. I remember some of the other mission trips that I um, that I went on. So after Andrews, I transferred to Oakwood. It's another story, but you know, I praise the Lord. I got to enjoy the best of both worlds. I thoroughly enjoyed my experience. Um, and one of the things that really stuck out to me um, as I was at Oakwood, I joined another mission group with a lot of you know pre med students, biology majors, and. And um, it amazed me as I saw these, you know, teenagers in their late teens, early 20s, giving up their December breaks, giving up their spring breaks, giving up their summers, instead of going back home to sleep in their plushy middle class beds, <laughs> they were going to 
sleep on the floor in churches and to share their testimony at juvenile detention centers or going to Africa and sleeping in a tent for weeks on end. And um, I tell you, having done it, you know, there's just nothing like it. And mm -hmm. I think those small experiences that I had of just being involved in ministry and seeing the hand of God move, it was was one of those experiences that just really moves on your heart and says, okay, this, this is something worth living. <laughs> this is, um, this is something worth investing in. And I, I really, really praise God for that experience. So, um, while I was in college, um, I actually spent some time in France. Uh, so not only did I do biology, but I also uh, did a double major in France, uh, in French, sorry, and a minor in chemistry. And, um, I traveled to France in my junior year. And prior to that, I had been challenged a little bit on, you know, a few of my principles here and there. <laughs> and um, I didn't, I, I mean, I had a feeling, but I didn't have a, a, a strong um, foundation, I, mm -hmm. I, I would say, on why it was that I believed um, the way that I believed. And when I was in France, so the language school was right beside the seminary. And so I went to the library and after I was finished with my homework, um, I discovered that there was an Ellen White section and I got a hold of, you know, one of these books and I was like, man, <laughs> this lady has a lot of great things to say. And so I started reading about healthful living. And, you know, one thing I really appreciated was not only the health recommendations, but the physiology behind why the recommendations were made. So I appreciated understanding why intermittent fasting was promoted or why you take a digestive walk instead of a power jumping jack session after you eat and, you know, why it's important to have sleep and all of that. And um, so it, it was as if, you know, at different points through my journey, I was having these experiences where my knowledge and appreciation for health was was deepening, and I really, really praise God for that. Yeah. So, after my experience in France, I came back uh, to Oakwood, and you know, they just happened to have so many different conventions on health at that time. And um, I met a friend uh, who told me, "Sister Camille, take a year off." before you go to medical school <laughs> and go study at one of the institutes. So a little bit of a history on that. So we had a um, teacher who came to Oakwood. She was a breast cancer survivor and she was in uh, the Department of Dietetics and she took a, a minivan full of us and drove us down to this place called Wildwood. Mm. And um, I have to admit to you, Andy, that when I went to, uh, to Wildwood, even though I was amazed with what I saw, I wasn't happy. Um, <laughs> I wasn't happy because I was convicted. <laughs> I was convicted because I knew I wasn't living up to all that I should have been living up to. <laughs> and then you know, living that life, I was silent on that trip back home. <laughs> <laughs> but it made an impression. It made an impression upon my heart. And I actually went back with two of my other friends. All three of us are doctors now. And um, we asked to spend a weekend. And we interacted with some of just the kindest doctors there, Dr. Grievous and Dr. Davis. And, you know, I remember up until this day, just the sweet and kind way that, you know, they interacted with us. They didn't judge us, but, you know, they really mentored us, you know, worked where we were at the time. And um, I remember us, you know, staying with a lovely lady and we were questioning all of her interesting ways. You know, she didn't eat supper and <laughs> she had interesting views on relationships <laughs> um, and, you know, a whole bunch of different things. But those, those seeds, those seeds were definitely planted. And, you know, fast forward so many years now, I, I can definitely understand and appreciate a lot of, a lot of these principles. So, when I um, was given the challenge to take a year off before medical school and to go back to a place like Wildwood or Ichi Pines or something like that, um, I decided I want to do it. I want to do it by God's grace. Now, my parents weren't excited. Neither was the chair of my biology department. Neither was Dr. Narati at Loma Linda. 
<laughs> I like Mel. Are you sure you want to do this? Um, but I did, and I praise the Lord. I did. It was actually one of the best experiences of my life. You know, just learning um, about God's natural ways. I went to Venezuela, learning how to do it in the mission fields. I went to GYC for the first time, and just saw so many other young people who were uh, touched by the power of God in their lives. And one thing my parents probably didn't know is that at that time I was really searching. And I was very grateful, you know, to be an Adventist and to be brought up in an Adventist home. But I was also very authentic and sincere. And I needed to know why I was Adventist. And I came to the point where at 21, I was going to explore, right? And I wanted to know why I believed what I believed. And if it made sense, I would stay. But if I didn't, I would leave. Mm -hmm. And um, I praise the Lord that we have an intelligent religion. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As I searched and, you know, as I learned to the message of the early pioneers and as I read the word of the Lord, you know, it was just a beautiful and transformational experience. I still remember, you know, waking up in the morning and rushing to the chapel to do my devotions because everything in the Bible was just coming, you know, so alive. And it was just such a beautiful, beautiful experience. So I really praise the Lord for the time that I had there. And um, shortly thereafter, and I don't know if you know this, uh, Andy, but this is, I think, the first time I met you, because mm -hmm. after going through all of that and deciding, okay, I really want to be, you know, a Christian godly doctor, is that possible? Is that possible after you've gone through all the rigors of traditional educational systems? And I was not sure, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. And, um, you know, I was working at UG Pines at the time as a life cell counselor and, you know, I was dealing with just a lot of different clients who came in with cancer or, you know, autoimmune disease. The one in specific I was uh, working with at that time had um, depression and was struggling with her weight and happens to live in Florida. And a few days prior, as I was wrestling with the board, you know, should I you know, continue on my path in medicine or, you know, should I not <laughs> do something else, you know, um, you know, it, would I be okay just being, you know, a farmer or not, not saying that that's not a great, you know, but, you know, would I just be okay being nothing for Christ. You know what I mean? You know, it was just really a heart tugging um, experience for me. And I remember, you know, walking around the field and just praying and asking the Lord. And I made a decision. I don't have to be a doctor. Lord, I can be anything you want me to be. And that's regardless of profession, regardless of, you know, I just want to serve you. I just want to do what it is that you want me to do. And it was at that point that he gave me clearance and peace. And he said, okay, you can go. <laughs> you yeah. can go. But I still hadn't seen the model, you know, outside of Dr. Grievous and, you know, Dr. Davis. And so I heard about um, this conference called the Amen Conference. And it happened to be in Florida. And it just so happened that the client that I was taking care of at the time lives in Florida and said, oh, you know, you got, you can drive down with me. <laughs> I can drop you off at the convention. And uh, long story short, Andy, I went to Amen and it was just such a beautiful experience. I saw you and your sister, your <laughs> husband, brother-in-law, you know, Dr. Raja, you know, Dr. DeRose, you know, even just last year I was at a conference with Dr. Raj and I was like, Dr. Raja, do you remember your talk that you gave on seeing Kodak moments with Jesus? I don't know if you remember that. That, uh, in 2007 yes and just seeing that just really reminded me that um, there is a way to do medical ministry Amen. so I really praise the Lord for all of the rich experiences um, that I've had and you know after that and I went to medical school it was a different experience because I could say you know um, I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen that patients can change. You know, I had a lot of um, folks who would come in and they were like, oh, I don't want to be here. And at the end, they were sharing their testimonies and, you know, they lost weight, you know, they'd gone down on their medications. And so really, um, 
got involved in leading a movement to help, you know, train and equip um, our, you know, betting young professionals in medical training to, to go on that path. And we actually started the Amen student chapter. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. and it was just such a, such a rich experience. So anyways, that has been some of what my experience has been like um, in, in my health journey. And, you know, through medical school, there was, you know, residency and, um, and following that, you know, I just really wanted to understand when it comes to making decisions and creating um, programs that really help patients at the end of the day, right? Yeah. To change, yeah. have, change behaviors, you know, how how do we address some of the gaps that we see? Um, I think we do a great job and I think you and I as physicians, Andy can humbly, humbly admit that we do a great job in certain areas. And yep. you know, when it comes to our chronic disease management, as we're seeing in this pandemic, there are still areas that we can improve. But um, that's something that, that you did very well, um, because you chose this pandemic to sort of make a, a, a little change in your direction. And so absolutely. We're, we're dying to hear about Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So in March <laughs> of this year, as we all know, the world changed. And for me, I came to a question in my life as to what do I do about it? You know, the Lord has blessed me, as I shared with you, with a lot of experiences, a lot of training. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to see a lot of the world. And um, and I do believe that as a people, you know, we have been given some very, very special truths um, as Adventists. Mm -hmm. And um, the question was, you know, I think a lot of us um, on this call, probably you as well, Andy, once we kind of saw how things were going, we realized Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> he is definitely coming soon. And, you know, this, this has definitely been a wake up call um, for so many of us. So the question that I had to grapple with is if I truly believe that he's coming soon, um, what do I want him to find me doing? Mm -hmm right and there is suffering all around us and we have seen um from a lot of different aspects the research the data you know i i presented actually at a national convention just last year and we were sharing how um you know even with a lot of the lifestyle principles that we accept and endorse as a people um even for ethnic minorities that you know have disproportionately low and adverse outcomes, this can be reversed by implementing a lot of positive changes. And, you know, I feel very privileged to be a part of a group that, you know, lives 10 years longer, but the Lord did not give us this just for us to pat ourselves on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. He um, gave us these truths um, to be stewards stewards yeah. of this message to others to share with others yes. and um the reality is that behavioral change is not easy right there are a lot of different components that go into that there is education there's support there's partnership there's you know evaluations and so at this time, I had to ask myself a question, you know, what are you going to do about this? And as a result, I decided, okay, let's do what we've been training to do for all of these years. Let's put together a program. Let's put together a practice. Let's put together something that's really going to help people where there are where they are. Um, so that's how O Natural Health Consulting Firm. Um, I guess was born. Um, it was a dream, as you know, I shared for very many years uh, that I had been training for, and um, privileged to just wrap my mind around. But it was actually time to implement it. So, so the ministry, the, the, it's called O Naturel. 
Yes, yes. Okay. So that's well in the French word, yes. you know, my French origins, and it essentially means in its natural state. And so we actually turned the, the word into an acronym that goes through a lot of the principles of health with A standing for attitude, right? U standing for usual habits, regularity, and I should say attitude just in terms of positivity, gratitude, you know, making sure that your mental um, space is where it needs to be in order to appreciate uh, the healing that comes thereafter. And obviously, it's for nutrition, as we know very well, A for activity, T for temperance. So we do talk <laughs> about um, habits that can either help or, um, you know, hinder your progress. Um, with you, we need to get a little creative. That's unathenda, Greek for water. <laughs> so <laughs> it's from an external application of water. R, you know, is rest. E for environment, where we talk about fresh air, you know, sunlight. And then L is where we uh, talk about love. And that's love both in our interpersonal relationships and, you know, eventually love um, when it comes to our relationship with Christ. And so, you know, our health consourcing firm has three major focus. We work with individuals, professionals, one-on-one -on -one who, you know, may have health conditions and may need to go a little bit deeper than, um, you know, what is offered traditionally. Um, Randy, I know you're in radiology, but you've had your internal medicine day, so I'm sure you, oh, can, <laughs> you can understand and relate to me when, um, when I share with you that oftentimes it was, it was very difficult, you know, in my 15 and 20 minute appointments to feel like I was doing justice in terms of really offering the care and the support that I know would be needed in order to make improved and long-term changes. And so for that reason, um, we've decided to create programs and create systems and structures that will really help to support people for the long run. We know that it doesn't take 15 minutes to change a habit, nor does it take a week, all right? It takes a period of time. And so how do we facilitate that in a way that's going to be most meaningful and effective? We also realize that there are different components. And so sometimes, you know, people get a little bit frustrated. They're like, oh man, you know, I worked out at the gym for an hour and I'm still not seeing the results or, you know, man, I tried this program and it didn't work, or I tried this nutrition. So we realize that there are different elements that are needed and we need to put these pieces of the package together so that we can get improved results. So for some people, that's detoxification, right? You know, making sure that there's no underlying elements that are going to prevent or inhibit mm -hmm. their ability to assimilate um, some of the positive things that they're putting in their body. Number two, you know, definitely nutrition, making sure that you're putting into your body the building blocks that's going to sustain it and give it the most effective outcome. Mm -hmm. And then fitness, you know, effective fitness strategies that's really going to help in the long run, you know, looking at your hormonal balance, making sure that everything is in check, and then also our mentorship, right? You know, it just amazes me. You know, we spend a lot of money. I know I spend a whole lot of money on my education, right? We spend a lot of money on our education, a lot of money on our business, a lot of money on our homes. But sometimes, you know, we forget the one thing that's going to allow us to enjoy it all, which is our health, right? And I think even for, um, you know, those of us, and, and you know this very well, right? It's really Rule number one is don't be your own doctor, right? Every doctor needs a doctor. We all need each other, right? We need that system of accountability. And even with we look at people with natural talents like Tiger Woods or, you know, others, uh, they have coaches, right? They have coaches. They have support systems to really help them be the best that we can be. So we have created the system, you know, to be able to support individuals. So one-on-one, -on -one, with um, this professional consulting support, but also working with organizations, working with companies, working with corporations, implementing corporate wellness. And, and I should mention that even though we're Adventists at our core, we're not necessarily um, overtly so, okay? And, and let me characterize that a little bit. Not everybody knows that they're true source of healing comes from above, all right? And sometimes they may not be open to that, you know, on the first encounter. But our job, our calling is to 
minister as Jesus ministered, right? He first formed those relationships. He first met their needs and then he bet them follow, right? And so we're sharing the evidence. We're sharing um, the recommendations. We're showing the advantage of, you know, um, having peace of mind, having positive relationships, having an attitude of gratitude, that positive action interactions, you know, all of these different things. We're showing the data of the superior outcomes in those who have have a relationship with Christ and have, you know, community. And then we're asking those thought provoking questions that are going to give people an opportunity to reflect on where they stand. You know, it is, is it well with your soul? Do you have peace? Is there someone that you can turn to when times get really difficult? Is there something that you're struggling with? And so it's really a beautiful opportunity to engage with people and interact in these longitudinal and long-term um, I guess, structures. Um, so we have programs that run from, you know, one month to, you know, an entire year <laughs> where we work with, with individuals, depending on where they are, or working with um, organizations, that, as I've mentioned uh, to you before. And then our third and last arm is actually working with communities. So especially um, some of our communities that um, suffer with a lot of non-communicable diseases and um, it's a negative impact. And so we really want to be able to partner um, with different organizations. We're actually partnering um, and in the conversations even right now with uh, ASI Columbia and you know many others in terms of how are we going to form these health partnerships? How are we going to implement and you know run programs that's going to help our you know, members, our church members partner with, you know, non-Adventists and form these relationships using the right hand of the gospel, which is health, yeah. and eventually getting to a point where we can um, bring them and introduce them to the true source of healing, which we all yeah. know comes from above. So yeah. anyway, uh, oh, now yes, because I know that you also have some great stories. Everybody loves a story. So tell us about some of the the stories and the results that you've had with this this ministry, which appears to be a wellness ministry. Um, it's right now still a for-profit, but you're going towards the nonprofit. But I know you've had some experiences with some of your clients, patients. Tell us about some of those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So several stories come to mind, um, Andy. And I guess I could start off with um, one of, you know, a a nurse <laughs> um, that that we worked with and you know she got on the phone with me and she's like you know I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive because I've never really been able to stick with anything and um, because of that I don't really know if I'm gonna get the outcome that I need to have you know she is very young but had a lot of health conditions. You know, she was um, very obese, um, had a lot of autoimmune conditions, thyroid uh, disorders. And, you know, I just really praise the Lord because as we started talking and interacting and, you know, even <laughs> getting on her program the first 10 days, Andy, she lost eight pounds. You know, her energy was through the roof and she was just so proud of herself <laughs> because she actually done this and she was actually seeing the fruit um, of her labor and um, really seeing positive, positive outcomes um, in her life. You know, I, I also think of an experience that we had actually just uh, about a week ago, um, actually not a week ago, this past Monday, where one of our um, clients was sharing her testimony actually got a little bit um, emotional as she was sharing it because she was saying that through her experience working together, she was convicted that she was a child abuser. Mm -hmm. When she said that, I, I paused a little bit and I was wondering where, where she was going with that. And she said, yeah, I was convicted that I was a child abuser because I'm a child of God and I've been abusing my body. Mm. I've been abusing my body with food and with just poor habits. And I'm so happy that your team was able to help me. Oh, amen. So I can overcome that. And, you know, 
<laughs> there, there have been so much more. I mean, there's another you know client we work with who is actually a physician, and you know she got on the program. Actually, she reached out to me. And she's like, I need help. <laughs> you know, I've been trying. I've been trying to do this. You know, on my own, but but I, I I need help. I need some accountability. I need some structure. And you know, we were able to work together. And you know, she, she lost a lot of weight as well because that was one of her goals. But in addition, she just had so much more energy. Her husband got on the program as well. He got really excited <laughs> and it was um, improving his diet and then even her children you know who struggled with eczema their face you know started to clear up a lot and um, you know their entire family was changed for the better so Andy there are just so many beautiful ways that the Lord can work through health evangelism in terms of reaching his children and I think you know even though the pandemic has been extremely unfortunate um, and has taken the lives of many. We are living in a critical time yeah. where hearts and minds are really opened yeah. and they are looking for answers. They are looking for solutions and the Lord has blessed us with that. Yeah. So my challenge to the ASI family that's here on this call, you know, before, you know, I, I wind down here at 1%, Andy, um, mm -hmm. is really to really ask the Lord what is it that he is calling us to do in this time and let's do it let us do it you know um I don't know what your experience has been but for me you know a lot of times ministry was a, a part-time thing you know something you do after your real job right but what if together as a family we were to say this is going to be our primary focus Jesus is coming and Lord please show me how I can make this my priority so I don't know who <laughs> is out there but you know if it's a situation where you as a person Person know that you know with regards to your health you're not where you need to be we would love to get in contact with you um, you know if you have a business or an organization or a corporation and you know you want to um, have our team work with you um, and share some of these messages or develop some of these relationships so that we can eventually um, get to the point where we talk about love you know and uh, the love of Christ um, with those um, who may not be as overtly open <laughs> to the gospel, but would be more open to a health program or wellness program or corporate wellness, then we definitely love to love to work with you. And um, I think even now as we transition, Andy, uh, I know that you have wonderful stories <laughs> also, you know, in terms of your experience. So I just um, really really would um, encourage us all um, as an ASI family to allow the Lord to use us. Um, and if there's any ideas that you have, any partnerships, um, you know, let us know. I'm actually going to ask Curtis to put her email address um, in the chat box. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Great. Well, as Camille said, her battery has gone dead and we actually prayed because at the beginning of this, she only had 32% battery and she's using a Mac. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have nothing against Macs. But I have, a, I have a, a, a PC that's plugged into the wall so I can, I can go forever. Camille, thank you so much for your testimony. I, um, Curtis is going to be getting back on here pretty soon. I just want to just um, sort of continue the the pandemic theme i truly believe that um we are living in the last days and i some, several of you know that we started a little ministry out of our home it's a cooking school and you know something i knew nothing about cooking schools i still don't but i was impressed during the COVID era i was out i'm a runner i was out running one morning i was on um, I was running out. I, I run about 10 miles on Sunday mornings and I was probably about mile three when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. My twin sister, Lindy Schwartz and um, Mark Finley wrote, uh, you know, that that set of articles for signs of the times. And oftentimes we read things and we forget what we read and we don't do anything about it. So like the man in James one. You look in the mirror, 
and you walk away and you don't remember what you looked like. And I was very impressed to start to, um, to do something for our neighbors. We live in a secular part of the country, um, very secular kind of uh, materialistic part of the country as most, a lot of us do. And so I was impressed to send a little handout to our neighbors. I mean, you know, you don't have to start an institute. Camille was impressed to start an institute, but what is lying next to you? And so I looked at those principles that my twin sister and, and Pastor Finley did. And I said to myself, you know something? This is gonna do our church nothing unless we share with other people. So I, ma I made a handout, three pages. I put all the principles, including the hot and cold showers during COVID, et cetera, et cetera. And um, uh, they didn't mention anything about caffeine and alcohol, but I said, I mentioned no caffeine, no alcohol and whatnot, a plant-based diet. And I, it was a three page and I went door to door. We passed everything out, passed out about um, 45 handouts, three page handouts. And Dino, our neighbors read them. And I got several thank you notes and phone calls because we, we were accessible. We put our phone number out there and our email address and people phoned us up and said, tell me about that hot and cold. So I'm mentioning all about the, the 1918 flu epidemic, pandemic rather. And, and they go, is there any scientific data? I said, oh yes, there is scientific data. Of course, I had no clue if there was scientific data. I still don't know if there's any, but it is true. That's the one thing I knew. And do you know, I heard from neighbors that they've been doing that hot and cold and they had not gotten sick since. The one neighbor said he was always getting sick and unable to maintain health. But this time he was very grateful and continues to this day to do the, <laughs> the hot and colds. And then I, I put some recipes, some plant-based recipes. And for some silly reason, I put, and when this pandemic is over in two or three months, this was back in March, we'll have a cooking school in my home. Well, of course, as we know, that didn't happen. And, and so one other ASI member challenged me and said they'd help me to do something online. And so the, the three of us couples got together in my neighborhood and we've been doing a cooking school. It's not perfect, but we have a great time and people come and they love it. We've been told by several of the attendees that they've made the recipes. One family, they've made them um, three times. We have in person, we have 12 guests, rather well, 10 guests in person, then we have an online presence. My residents at the hospital caught wind of what I was doing and they said they wanted to join. So this last time they joined. So my vineyard is my neighborhood and and my workplace. And so we've been praying that this will, will be a, an avenue for getting Bible studies. Um, cooking is great, health is great, but without the gospel, um, it's just another healthy person running around without God and with no future. And so that's our goal. We've had wonderful feedback. Our last cooking school was, this, um, was last month and the, it began at 7, ended at 8, and the people did not leave till 9.30. They just enjoyed sharing, asking questions and whatnot. So I just appeal to you, make your homes open to people in this COVID times we're living in. We have lots of help from, from Ministry of Healing and from councils on diets and foods. We can really be a ministry in our own homes. We don't have to have an institute, but if we do an institute, praise the Lord. And so I just want to encourage us all to participate in our own homes. Um, it doesn't have to be organized, you know, um, we, but we have a great time. And so um, I don't know uh, um, if Curtis is gonna get back on and rescue me, but I've been so excited about what we did in this neighborhood. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you and asks you to do something and you recognize you actually cannot do it, trust the Holy Spirit, just move forward in faith. And that's what we did. You know, I, I, I looked at the pictures of our first cooking school. There's a funny story. And we had been to Teeny Finley and Mark's place for a, a little retreat for a ministry I'm involved in. And I looked at Teeny's setup and I thought, oh my word, we don't know what we are doing. I looked at the pictures and I thought, oh, this is terrible. But then I said to myself, 
God is going to bless the sincere efforts of his people. And I was revived. <laughs> so I stole some of Tini's ideas for the next one, had a better setup. And I wish that Tini was with us half the time. But you know, God will use your efforts. If you don't remember, oh, and this is another thing we did. We have at our, our cooking class a 15 to 20 minute, 20 minute health lecture, which most of the people, that's their favorite part. They love the food, but they love the, the, the lecture. My brother-in-law spoke this past time on cardiology. And you know, he mentioned Bible texts in there. And you know, no one walked out. I prayed. We pray for everyone. And you know, the people said a very hearty amen. These are unchurched people. But they said amen because I prayed for them from my heart. Pray for people. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. We're told by the apostle Paul, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of, of Christ for salvation. So don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Just do what it is that you do that the Lord has called you to and use whatever is at your hand. Curtis, thank you for joining me again. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you have something to share too. Are you able to hear me? I can hear you now, Curtis, yes. Let me just uh, try one thing here. All right. <clears throat> Someone's asked a question, would Andy be willing to share to a link attached in the ASR invitation. Um, sure. <laughs> I don't know what that to share about, but you know, I, I, I will say this. I love the Lord. I love the Bible. I love Bible study. And you know, when, when, when there's an opportunity to study the Bible with somebody, I'll do anything, <laughs> including do a cooking school. <laughs> I do love to cook and I can cook. <laughs> Well, so, I have a few a few questions here, Andy, that are in the chat, um, yes. just from what you've shared here. Um, we have one question asking, "Can you share your three pages with me? I'd like to share with my neighbors." I guess this is what you were what you were sharing with your neighbors. Um, is that something? Yeah, that you can share? absolutely. I can share that with you. Um, just send me my my email address is a n d i b o b h at hotmail dot com. That's my husband's name is Bob. I'm Andy, A-N-D-I, or last name is Hunsaker, begins with an H, so A-N-D-I-B-O-B-H at hotmail.com. I'll be happy to share that with you. I have the recipes on there that I shared with people. And let me tell you something. Oh, and the Lord is blessed because now we have a website for a cooking school and we were on YouTube. Again, it's not perfect, so the website is just now being built, but our recipes are on there as well that we used. And the Lord is just leading a bridges following. We knew nothing about website. The three husbands were the ones that did all of our media. And uh, it, it's been an incredible, exciting journey. Crazy. Right. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, as far as sharing your recipes, are people able to, is the best way then to access that on YouTube? Or what would be the well, best way? Our website is creativeplantbasedcooking.com. Creative plant all one word creativeplantbasedcooking.com. We're still building it. There's going to be an about us section. We're going to be, so all of our classes are on there so far. And then we're going to be putting on there, what do I do with this? One of the people that came said, you know, I went to this co-op for, for vegetables and I got some turnips. What do I do with a turnip? So we're going to put some recipes on there, things like that. Just things, if you make a wonderful supper, take a picture of it and put a recipe. So we're going to have a section in there on what do you eat for supper as a plant-based person? What do you eat for breakfast? What do you eat for lunch? Make your food beautiful mm -hmm. so it looks appetizing. <laughs> Make sure it's not too brown. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, another person's asking, are you recording the cooking classes? I think you said you are yes. recording them. Okay. Yes. They're on, on YouTube and they're, they're, they're also going to be the first one was on YouTube. Um, we were very clumsy at the first one. We were so nervous we forgot to press the record button. But um, we've gotten better, so it's on YouTube. It's also on the Creative, the plant, okay. creative Plant Based Cooking website. Okay, so in the chat here, I've put the website. And if you just click on that, it'll take you right to the website. And there you'd be able to access the videos that Andy uh, has recorded there. So that's yeah. perfect. Oh, 
Camille's back. <laughs> You're back. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but we're off. Okay. Well, we uh, Andy's just been sharing about how uh, God's opened ways for her to connect with her neighbors and others, um, and she's been telling us about her cooking classes. And so we've just been uh, blessed by what she shared here. Um, we do have a few questions here for you, Camille, if you're uh, taking questions at this point. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. For sharing. Um, Denise asked, uh, were you part of uh, NAPS at Oakwood? Yes, yeah. So I definitely was part of uh, that mission group at Oakwood. I was blessed. I was blessed by being part of it. So praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And please type any more questions you might have for either Andy or Camille here as we're wrapping things up here. Um, we just had a comment here, Camille. Uh, hello. Nice to see you. Missing you in Palau. Lazerne. Uh, hello. <laughs> well, that's my lovely family in Palau. Yes. Did some amazing work in Palau. And just praise the Lord for the beautiful ministry that's going on in Palau. So they have a wonderful vegetarian restaurant, you know, the school academy is very vibrant in the school. And so, uh, so, so wonderful uh, to hear from my family in Palau. So, so that's, that's another thing. When um, I was finished with residency, I don't know if you know this, Angie, but um, I spent a year in Guam and it was just such a beautiful experience. I got to travel to Palau and Panape and a lot of the different Pacific Islands and I was just blessed to see all the wonderful work that the Lord is doing there. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you joined Louis Torres there, right? Was that what it was? Pardon? You joined Louis Torres in, in Guam, was that, or was that different? Yeah, we, we, yeah. we, yeah, we missed each other. He was, he was heading out and I was heading in, so. <laughs> so it's a blessing to be there, yes. Yeah. yeah. You went to silent, Curtis. Curtis, you're talking, but we can't hear you. Uh, I think you're on you mute. Me? Okay, Camilla. Oh. There you go. Yep, now we can. I know your time got cut short, and we kind of kind of had to improvise here a little bit. Is there anything uh, before we kind of wrap up here that you wanted to just share um, about maybe somebody who's, who's perhaps uh, – either in medicine or, or thinking of it that you might just share that would be an inspiration or some advice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I tried to hit on it right before, right before I lost everyone. <laughs> um, but I, I, I guess my charge um, to us all and myself included um, is if we really believe that Jesus is coming again, and he's coming soon. Let's live like it, you know? And I think a lot of times it's easy for us to um, get caught up in the day-to-day -day life, but what if our ministries could be our life, you know? And what if the truths that we know um, could be a part of what we do full time with all of our energy. And, um, and, and I believe that God has a lot of principles. He has a lot of ways, both in, you know, the word and in the spirit of prophecy that helps us to be self-sustaining as we do that. And, um, and, and I do believe that once we set our hearts and put our minds to it, he can help us. And, and the truth is we're all a family, right? And we all need to help each other on this journey. You know, I'm so grateful. Um, and I actually, should put a shameless plug here for any mentors, <laughs> you know, in the ASI circle, you know, for myself and, you know, other um, young professionals who are trying to do the Lord's will. We need you. We need your help. We need your support. We need your guidance. Um, and so would love to get in contact. And if there's any way that we can help each other, you know, as we empower the, the, the right arm of the gospel, we're living a time when you know, a lot of our traditional methods of doing health evangelism um, 
isn't, isn't quite possible anymore. You know, we're not able to do our free clinics. You know, we're not able to do our health expos because of COVID. Um, but what are some of the other things that we can do? How can we take it virtually, but not just, not just as an event, not just to share information, but to actually help people in the continuum of their health journey, of their behavioral change, of their encounter with the Lord. Um, and that does take a little bit of one-on-one -on -one investment, but I believe that together as a family of God, we can do it and we can do it um, by his grace. You know, even right now, um, you know, I'm having some Bible studies and, you know, just even one hour a week <laughs> and then meeting, you know, once every two months and having dinner and talking about something else, you know, just the, the bond, you know, that I've been able um, to develop. Up. And I'm also part of some other groups um, online. I can think of, you know, one young adult group that we have right now with over 100 non Adventists um, where we're sharing, you know, different events and we're pairing up and, you know, praying together. And so there are a lot of um, different avenues and different ways that we can impact each other. And I'm sorry, there's so much for me to share, but just this last little story. So I didn't know this, but last year I was at the reunion at UG Pines. And and I was told that, did you know Agatha Thrash was an atheist? She was an atheist doctor with her husband at Emory. And someone decided they were going to invite her to do Bible studies. And she declined and they came back and she declined again. And the last time she just didn't decline in time. So they caught up. <laughs> they caught up and she's like, okay, let me listen to these folks. But, you know, I have often thought about, you know, a lot of the people that I interact with that I would think, oh, they would never be open um, to the gospel or they would never be open to the message and look at the legacy that she's left today, right? So, you know, we, we all have different opportunities to touch the lives of others in whatever sphere that we're in. So, Let's think about how we can use the right harm of the gospel. Let's think about how we can use healthy evangelism and unique and creative ways during this time because the world definitely needs it. So that's those are my final words, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, I want to uh, thank everybody for joining and I want to thank Camille. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your journey, your testimony, certainly um, not just physicians can be challenged but we all can be challenged to serve the Lord better. I want to remind you that next week at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Harold Lance will be joining us. Dear Harold Lance, I can hardly wait. I love listening to Harold. He's such a wealth of information. I want to have a mind like his when I get to be his age. He is just brilliant and sharper than a tack. So I'm looking forward to hearing Harold's testimony next week of how the Lord led him. Um, I want to thank each of you also for joining us. And I pray that, as Camille said, this is really a wake-up call for us as Seventh-day Adventists, us as ASI members. We're called to participate in sharing the gospel. And, you know, as I think about the, the children of Israel, the Lord raised them up, not just to be the apple of his eye, but to be a witness for people. We as Seventh-day Adventists have been raised up in this church to be a witness. And so the Lord is trying to wake us up, just, just gentle. Believe you me, my husband and I have had a conversation about things are gonna be much worse than this COVID-19. And so we wanna make sure that we use every opportunity that we have. So my challenge to you is, how can you become involved in personal ministry, personal investment. And so that's what I want to leave us with a challenge tonight. And Curtis, unless you have any last things, we'll pray and then we'll be dismissed. Anything else, Curtis, before I pray? Okay. Well, we pray then. Father in heaven, I just thank you so much for entrusting this church with a gospel that is different from other churches. Lord, you've chosen us as your special people, not for us to just sit as repositories, but Lord, as distributors of your goodness. You want to return to this earth. That is evident. Lord, I pray that we hear your heart and that we obey and that we respond to you. I thank you for each person that joined tonight. I pray you'll be with Camila. She's there in Washington, D.C. with the Au Naturel 
ministry, that you will bless that ministry and raise up people to help and participate. Be with us this week, Lord. Keep us safe from this virus. Uh, we know that, that these are just birth pangs, but we don't have anything to fear. And so we look to you and we trust you. Thank you for being our God and Savior and our friend. Thank you for your goodness. For Jesus' sake, amen. 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 Can't hear you, Curtis. Got it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Good night, ASI. God Good bless night. you all. All right. <laughs> Thanks. How do I get off this bus? <laughs>